Prime Minister of Somalia returns after attending IGAD meeting in Khartoum. Djibouti and Somalia comes out strongly to oppose the move on Canada in interfering with the internal affairs of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Handing over ceremonies of the various ministries as the new ministers occupy their offices. Zimbabwe arrests fleeing opposition politician. The international community has widely criticized Washington following U.S. President Donald Trump withdrawal from major nuclear pact and resumptions of the sanctions on Iran. Good evening and welcome to the broadcast. My name is Mwenge Saleh. The Prime Minister of Somalia returns after attending the IGAD meeting that took place in Khartoum, Sudan. The meeting was aimed at mediating and creating a unified solution in maintaining peace in the region of South Sudan. The Prime Minister of Somalia, Hassan Ali Khayre, attended the IGAD meeting convened at an extraordinary summit in Khartoum, Sudan. The meeting was aimed at the resolution of the conflict in the Republic of South and Sudan. The meeting was chaired by His Excellency Omar Hassan al-Bashir. We know that this plight in the history of your young nation will not define you, but I'm here today to share with you that the difficulties and the possibilities in overcoming it. The similarities between our two countries are too striking to ignore. On the positive side, to the brothers and sisters of South Sudan, Somalia and South Sudan both exhibit enormous potential as economic powerhouses with vast and untapped natural resources and entrepreneurial population. The country's premier Haire had the meeting in various levels of Sudan officials while he was there. Sudan's head of state, His Excellency Omar al-Bashir, met with the Somali Prime Minister at the defense perimeter in the capital of Sudan, Khartoum, yesterday. The two brotherly nation leaders discussed ways to strengthen relationship between the two countries. Djibouti and Somalia are having a mutual friend, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. With a spat between the Kingdom and Canada, Somalia and Djibouti came up with statements condemning the actions of Canada terming it as interfering with the sovereignty of the kingdom. Somali government through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has come out officially on the issue of Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and Canada. The statement he posted on Twitter says that the government of the Federal Republic of Somalia has followed closely the development of relations between the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and Canada. In this regard, the Federal Republic of Somalia affirms it is support for the sisterly Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in its position of rejecting external interference in its internal affairs in the framework of respect for the principle of non interference enshrined in the Charter of the United Nations, including its sovereignty and the independence of its decisions and policies or procedures adopted. Judicial process related to their national laws, the federal government of Somalia has expressed the hope that Riyadh and Ottawa will overcome their differences in order to ensure their continued trust and respect for the exchange. Meanwhile, the Republic of Djibouti has expressed its condemnation and denunciation of the Canadian interventions in the internal affairs of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. A female, it is absolute solidarity and full stand with the kingdom in countering such interventions and confronting all those who seek to infringe on its sovereignty. Djibouti Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation expressed in a statement with full confidence in the wise leadership of the custodian of the two holy Moscow, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz al Saudi and his government in defending the rights of Arab countries and the Islamic war. A series of handing over ceremonies took place today 
with the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources and the Ministry of Education receiving new ministers. The handing over ceremony of the Minister of Fisheries and Marine Resources today held in Mogadishu. In attendance were high level officials from Somali government, including the country's deputy prime minister, ministers, member of Somali parliament of the two houses. Abdurrahman Bedan, the new minister, said at the ceremony that he thanks his predecessor for his hard work and is committed to continue the task following his food steps. Somali Deputy Prime Minister Honorable Mahdi Mohamed Goulet congratulated the new post of the ministry and acknowledged the sacrifice made by the Dr. Abdurrahman Abdi Hashi, former minister. A similar ceremony happened for the new Minister of Education, Abdullahi Goda Barre, who took over the office from Abdurrahman Daher Osman. Speaking at the event, the new Minister of the Education thanked his predecessor and asked for his support to fulfill his duty. Because of his experience as the minister for more than one year, officials from different institutions of the Federal Republic of Somalia graced the handover ceremony. This comes as Somali Prime Minister newly appointed new ministers. Zimbabwe arrests an opposition politician who was seeking asylum in Zambia. Zimbabwe police on Wednesday arrested former finance minister opposition politician Tendia BT as he tried to cross the border and seek asylum in Nairobi, Zambia, his lawyer said. Thank you very much. Yes, he has been arrested at the uh, Zambia border, at the Chirunda border post. Um, his intention uh, was to claim political asylum in Zambia. He is of the opinion that uh, his life has been in danger and uh, he requires the protection of the, Zimbabwe, of the Zambian government. BT, who is part farmer, an election alliance with President Emerson Menegagwe's man Reval Nelson, is the first senior opposition politician to be arrested in the aftermath of last week's disputed presidential election won by Managagwa. Lawyer Nogabazita Mililo said Peter was arrested after presenting himself to Zambian immigration officials at Jirundu border post north of the capital Harera and police had not yet informed him of the charges. United States President Donald Trump faces worldwide criticism over reimposing sanctions on Iran. The international community has widely criticized Washington following U.S. President Donald Trump's withdrawal from a major nuclear pact and reassumption of sanctions on Iran. Despite the global outcry, Trump's withdrawal from the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Actions, also known as the Iran Nuclear Deal, on Tuesday, first batch of sanctions were, re were re imposed on Iran. Russian Foreign Minister on Tuesday condemned Washington, saying that the Russia would do everything to perceive and fully implement the Iranian nuclear deal, which is under threat by the U.S. unilateral sanctions. The move by U.S. Buddhist Turkey in tight situation, the Turkish Foreign Minister said authorities are working to avoid the U.S. sanctions from harming Turkey. The Syrian Foreign Minister condemned Washington as well saying that the Syria supports Iran in the face of aggressive U.S. policy. Chinese State Councilor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi said in the Singapore on Friday that the China is, wa is willing to work with all bodies to continue to safeguard the Iranian nuclear. British Defense Secretary Kevin Williamson said on Tuesday that the current joint comprehensive operation actions were the best possible and a difficult day to address the Western's concern on Iran and sharp contrast with the Trumpist abhorrent of the deal. Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Sharif held talks in Tehran with North Korean Foreign Minister Rai Wang Hu in a show of a defiance as the United States reimposed economic sanctions on the Islamic Republic. In the social media post on Tuesday night, Zarif wrote that the world is a sick and tired of the U.S. unilateralism, adding that the world wouldn't follow impulsive tweet deducts. Now that's it from us today. Join us tomorrow, inshallah. My name is Salah Mwenge.